Welcome to the J. Dunn Construction Builder Series. We dive into how and what we're building across Texas and Oklahoma through the eyes of the people and the projects that paved the way. We highlight our team, our culture, our differentiators, and what has made us the builder of choice for the last 25 years. I'm Chuck Lipscomb, Senior Vice President and Regional Client Solutions Director with J.A. Dunn Construction, based here in beautiful Austin, Texas. Um, we're here today with Greg Lorai, who is the President of J.A. Dunn South Central Region. Today, we're going to focus on the next part of the chapter of J.A. Dunn moving to Texas. On our previous episode, we talked to President CEO Gordon Lansford about the decision J.A. Dunn made back in 1997 to acquire a firm, which ended up with us moving to Texas. Um, today, we're going to focus on that next chapter. But before I get into uh, the history. Uh, we're going to talk to Greg a little bit about, about him, get to know him a little bit, his his career, uh, and how he ended up at JE Dunn. So first of all, Greg, great to have you today. Thanks for being a part of our Texas Builder Series. Thanks for having me, Chuck. I'm looking forward to it. Coming out of uh, college or going through college, you had to make some career decisions. So tell us a little bit about what it was about construction that interested you and how, how you ended up in this great industry that um, I'm sure has pre presented both opportunities and challenges for you along the way. Well, like many of us in construction, you know, I I always had aspirations of wanting to be an architect. And then once I, I, I attended Iowa State University and spent about a year and a half in the architecture program, I realized that was probably not much for me. So I decided to uh, switch to construction engineering at Iowa State. Um, it was something that always excited me, just seeing all these buildings and how they were built and really having some tangible evidence, you know, that I actually existed here on this earth long after I passed. So it was something that just, you know, interested me from the very beginning. And I was happy to make that change. And I I, I joined J.E. Dunn straight out of college. And uh, I actually missed my interview with J.E. Dunn, believe it or not, um, because I had a second interview with another, another contractor out in California who I thought I might have been interested in. But um, luckily, Jay Dunn was was good enough to take me back and uh, invited me down for an interview in the summer of 1990, and the rest is history. I actually celebrated my 32nd year anniversary with the company, and uh, I spent you know 23 years of those 32 years in in Kansas City working in operations. Really loved what I did. Was given a tremendous amount of opportunity on some really cool projects to work on. And after 23 years in operations and heading up a division in Kansas City, I was offered this position to uh, take over as regional president of the South Central region. How did how did you help from a strategy standpoint in those early years while you were here to really kind of focus and create discipline around focusing on the right opportunities with the right clients and, and trying to create uh, more of a, a sustainable business? Great question. That is a great question. And, um, you know, coming from Kansas City, where J.E. Dunn has their corporate headquarters, and I worked for 23 years, had a really strong ties to the business community as well as to the community itself. When we moved down here, having folks take my call, you know, potential clients and architects and saying, J.E. who? You know, that was a big <laughs> surprise for me. That wasn't one of the things that I was I was used to up in Kansas City. And I'll tell you, it was quite a, a humbling experience for me, knowing that we had to come in here and either establish or help reestablish our brand in the market and learn how to differentiate ourselves against our competition and attract the right talent to do so. One of the things that was a challenge for us is that we never really demonstrated a long-term commitment from a leadership standpoint in each one of our business units or our regional offices. You know, it was kind of a revolving door. So I think that caused some question in the marketplace about what our commitment was and how long we were going to be in for the game here in Texas. You know, with the help of great people like yourself and others that I was blessed to have follow me down here from Kansas City, we worked hard on demonstrating that we're committed long term to the state of Texas. We had to execute consistently to really drive the exceptional client experience and drive a culture of excellence. And, you know, to me, um, the strategy really started with um, bringing in the right people to drive the right culture. And then once you bring in the right people and establish the right culture, um, you know, where it's much easier to differentiate ourselves um, against our competition and in the market and execute with certainty of outcome from an operational excellence standpoint, that opens the doors 
up for us to really increase our market share and enter and expand to new markets within each one of our regional offices. So where would you say in your mind, Greg, the turning point may may have been in those early years trying to take a, a young sort of a young operation that had just uh, gone through an acquisition and where did, where did you think it started to turn to a, to a positive that's a that's a great question Chuck I would say that the turning point as you well know um, is different for each one of the markets that we were in okay whether that be in Austin Dallas Houston San Antonio Oklahoma City or Tulsa but I would say the turning point just in general terms was when we finally won a nice high-profile project, like the Del Seton Hospital in Austin was a huge turning point for the Austin market because it also involved philanthropic um, endeavors as well. So I think each office had its own catalyst of a project that allowed us to really show um, what we could do as a company, how committed we were as a company to that particular project and to the community that that project served and we were able to successfully build on that throughout the duration of the last nine years. After you've been here a year or two, we won some um, iconic projects and started to really take center stage, but obviously executing and the operational excellence had to come into play in those early years as well. So maybe talk a little bit about in your mind, some of what you were able to bring around that operational excellence focus for our Texas market. Operational excellence is fundamental to what we do, specifically as it relates to the performance of J.E. Dunn Construction as a business. But more importantly, it was creating that awareness that we needed to do something much larger than that. And we need to make, make sure that we understood the business outcomes of our clients and what they were focused on and what made that project a success for them. Not just a, a project that was successful for us, but what their vision was for the project, what their business need dictated for the outcome of that project and who that project served. We had to take a step back and really understand and, and translate into um, successful business outcomes for our clients where, you know, they want to do work with us. They are looking for us to do their next project without having to go through a, an extensive selection process because we were known that we could deliver that certainty of outcome. Let's talk a little bit about the people. How would you describe an ideal team player at JE Dunn? I would say an ideal team player is an individual that is collaborative, can communicate extremely well, can be empathetic, is all in all the time. Sometimes that means nights and weekends a lot of the time too as well. We're here as servant leaders. We're here as good stewards to our clients' money. I mean, they don't, you know, not all of our clients are serial builders where they build a building every other year or every year for that lack of terms. And so this is a one-off for them in, in many aspects, just showing that, you know, we're all in and that we care and that we're committed again, to their business outcomes and committed to their success as much as we are committed to our success. It's that win-win mentality and having leaders that have been established within each one of the markets that we have offices in. Texas is a successful state with the economy um, continuing to, to produce incredible value. Um, a lot of companies moving here from all over the world, really, um, investing billions and billions of dollars in, in infrastructure and and uh, new facilities and jobs, you know, coming here, um, setting all types of records and and really just, again, the Texas miracle economy is the way we define it. So, with that, of course, there's a lot of there are a lot of great builders in this state. Um, Jay Dunn among them. But how do you describe Jay Dunn as the, the things that differentiate us? as you look at our growth in Texas? Texas is a large market. I mean, it's got great opportunity. It's in great growth mode, even in, in, in today's terms, you know, given even the economic challenges that we're going through right now. I would say that um, along with that, you know, you can never take for granted your position in the market and how hard it is to establish that position in the market and more importantly, to maintain it or grow that position in the market. You've got to develop and execute specific strategies to attack 
those markets that you want to penetrate. And you've been a big part of that. And I appreciate your help with that. And and you also need to stay committed to your strategy and not give up on it. You know, you not give up on it and chase the shiny objects out there. But at the same time, you need to be nimble enough to course correct when needed. We use a term one done here a lot. And, um, you know, we have been able to successfully align our resources around the state where we we're operating in multiple markets, of course, across the state with sometimes clients that have facilities and operations that span the whole region. So what does that mean to you? And what would you like our clients and listeners to to know about One Done and how that sets us apart? Well, I mean, One Done is exactly what it is. You know, we all share a similar fate as a company as it relates to our business outcomes as well. And it behooves us to cooperate and work very closely with our partners in the other regions. There's three other geographical regions and a vertical market region. And how we share resources to provide the strongest teams, the most effective teams to match to up with a complicated project that might be really tough, fast schedule. Um, you know, we have that national reach of talent that's not just limited to the five offices that we have in this region, but we've got access to talent across the United States. And again, as I mentioned before, we all share a similar goal for the company. And, you know, it is purely a help culture that we have developed at JE Dunn, and we work and row the boat all together to make sure that we help achieve those goals. So if you're talking to a college graduate or um, a prospect out there looking at career options, what what would you say it is about Jay Dunn they should consider? I mean, beyond just the big complex projects we're building, ability to to you know be a lifer like yourself to put 30, 40 years in and have a great retirement. What are the some of the things that you want to make sure they know about Jay Dunn? The thing that I think always resonates with folks that I talk to is really to take a look at, again at what our guiding principles are, Chuck, and that is, you know, what we believe and who we are. In the crazy world of business these days, you know, there's not a lot of companies that say, you know, hey, we put families first. And I will tell you, and I've lived it throughout my 32 years here, is we put families first. So if things aren't going good at home. Things are usually not going good at work, right? We want to make sure that there's that balance to the extent there can be. The other thing, too, is when you come to work for J.E. Dunn, and I tell them this, is we believe in doing the right thing, okay? And as long as you're doing the right thing and playing above board, um, you never have to second guess yourself with Jay Dunn. If you're doing the right thing for a client, acting with integrity, then you're not going to have any problems succeeding here at Jay Dunn. And the other thing about, you know, as it relates to what we are, I always love it is, you know, we are all in. And I felt this myself coming into the company was that as long as I was all in, I asked the questions. Because believe me, I had didn't know the answers. You know, I didn't have a lot of construction experience coming out of school by any means. And the company afforded me some great opportunities to be involved on some cool projects. And I'll tell you what, I didn't know the answers to a lot of questions that people were asking me that they probably thought I should have known when I started straight out of school. It took uh, a long time and experience on different projects to learn. And as long as you're willing to be a sponge and to learn and to ask questions and be engaged in the the opportunities internally, as well as having the support of the company to be what you would want to be involved in from a community standpoint and professional organizations outside of the company, it's just the entire package. So um, again, as much as you want to get involved in, as much as you want to take a leadership role in, the company supports you for doing that. Well said. Last question here. As you look back uh, over your decade, almost decade at the helm here in Texas, what are some of the most impactful lessons you've learned and how how do you think we can apply those moving forward to continuously improve? Well, I'll tell you what, the most important lesson I've learned is making sure that you know we've got all six of our key strategic initiatives that are out there but it really starts with the people you know when i look at a company a company is nothing more than a vessel people make up the company we have a lot of people that work for us and they have themselves their families to support and they have career goals and objectives and aspirations themselves and 
I look at it as it's up to me, as well as our regional executive leadership team, which you're part of, really to be able to create and support a platform and a strategy that allows our people to achieve their personal goals and their professional goals in life, because it all marries up, right? It all marries up. So, I mean, that's one of the things that I learned in Kansas City. There was a lot of people, you know, knocking down the door to work for us because they wanted to build the big projects. And we were building the big projects in Kansas City. Okay. Down here, there's 10, 15 JE Duns that are doing the same thing. It was just an aha moment for me um, after coming down here and having to make many leadership changes and having to do many things on the talent side of the house, how important people are to making the company work. That is the company. The company is not the piece of paper. It's not the letterhead. The people are the company. And that was just kind of my aha moment. Well, Greg, I really appreciate your time today. It was great to visit with you. Great to uh, get your insights today as we continue to explore our history here in Texas and also uh, our future, which is uh, looking bright. So I appreciate your participation today. Thanks, Chuck. Enjoyed being here.